Hi, I'm Chris Baseford, and today I'm going to show you how to use auxiliary sends and returns. I use sends and returns for time-based effects, things like reverbs and delays, um, but basically you can use this for any, any effect or any signal routing where you want to be able to mix in an affected signal alongside the dry signal. So how I would do that, I'm going to use a, a session here, I've got some drums, kick, snare, overheads, rooms, I'm going to set up a reverb on my snare sample using this method of a, using a send and return. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my snare sample. I'm going to take a, a signal tap off there by using a send. And now I have to create an auxiliary input track to accept that signal that I just routed. So go up to track, new, create, auxiliary input. And you can see I just created that track here, auxiliary one. I'm going to rename that reverb. Make sure to keep your session as organized as possible. And I'm going to select the input to correspond with the send, bus one. Now, you can see there's signal being, being sent to this reverb track. And my send fader basically determines how much signal is getting sent there. Now, as you can hear, nothing's changing on my snare track. It stays the same regardless of what's going on with this fader. And that's the advantage of sends, is you can set them either to be pre-fader or post-fader. We'll get into that later, but it lets you basically keep your signal intact, but then mix something else in with it. In this case, a reverb. So I'm going to set up a reverb on the insert of my send track here. And now when I play the track, You can hear the reverb being mixed in with the snare track. Now I can use this send to determine how much signal is actually going to that reverb. And this is nice because what I can do is I can very easily copy that to a bunch of other tracks and adjust the signals in the same way. So I basically put a reverb on four of my drum tracks only using one plugin. And if I wanted to make a change to that plugin, I only have to change it on the one plugin. Whereas if you went and put inserts, reverb inserts on all of your tracks, every time you wanted to make a change, you'd be going back and changing a bunch of them, making sure the settings match up if you wanted to. Uh, but more importantly, especially with reverbs, which are very resource intensive in terms of plugins, you'd, ha you'd have used four plugins. Whereas right now I'm only using one. So that's obviously the more efficient way of working. It's going to save you a lot of processing power and uh, it's just going to be a lot easier to work very similar to how a console would be uh, set up with sends and returns. So uh, try to incorporate that in your next mix session. I'm sure it's going to make a big difference for you. I'm Chris Baseford. That's your recording tip for today.